Well, this was unexpected. SteamOS 3, the free and open source operating system that has been powering the Steam Deck for the past couple of years, is now finally available for other handhelds as well. First and foremost, of course, for the Legion Go S, which is officially supported, but also for the regular one and the ROG Ally with improved support. On top of that, we are seeing a couple of useful quality of life features and an improved rating system with SteamOS as its own category. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, as some headlines, but also articles in general, are kind of mispresenting on what's actually going on here. In today's video, we are going to talk about this public release of SteamOS, what this means for the future of gaming on Linux, and ultimately, if you already can or even should install SteamOS on your personal machine. And let's get straight into it. So it finally happened, and the old SteamOS website featuring the very outdated Debian 8 is now gone. And if you're looking it up right now, then you were met with a completely overall website that features the new console interface as well as the new game compatibility rating, but I'm getting ahead of myself. What it doesn't feature though is a direct download to an ISO file like you would typically expect from other Linux distributions. While SteamOS now officially supports the Steam Deck and the Legion Go S, as well as initial support and instructions for other handhelds, the installation still happens via the good old Steam Deck recovery image, which does have some limitations. First of all, you're going to need a device with AMD exclusive hardware and an NVMe drive, and it's still targeted for handhelds, which narrows the selection down quite a bit. The installer also basically flattens everything you have on that drive, so don't expect it to support dual boot just out of the box. This means that if you want to install SteamOS on a different device like a laptop or gaming PC that features a slightly different hardware combination or just has an Intel processor or Nvidia GPU, then nothing really changed. This release is really just meant to offer a supported distro for a wider range of handhelds. However, the fact that they bothered to actually change the website this time shows that Valve is still dedicated to making SteamOS available to the masses. But I wonder what it will eventually look like, because as of right now, it is really targeted for console-like devices. Nothing new really, because Steam machines have always been like this. However, I do think that many people just expect more, like a traditional desktop experience. And this is where it becomes complicated, because a lot of things are just outside of Valve's control. For the Steam session, SteamOS uses a lightweight microcompositor called Gamescope, which is maintained by Valve, and it's usually one of the first ones to implement features that other desktop environments take longer to develop. In terms of SteamOS for the desktop then, most people would expect the feature that they have in the Steam session to work the same in the KDE Plasma one, which depending on when it was implemented might just not be the case yet. I believe that for a SteamOS release on the desktop, we need closer feature parity, for example Global Fatality Effect Super Resolution, short FSR, and minimize the performance difference. The last part is actually not that big of a deal and you hardly notice a difference. However, from personal experience, I can tell you that there are enough people out there that will try to get the maximum performance with the Gamescope session and then criticize it because they can't use it like a PC. Whatever. As of right now, SteamOS will remain a console operating system, despite being capable to run on certain desktop hardware as well. And this is very important, because SteamOS did not in fact get released as its own distro that you can install on your PC. It has actually just released with increased handheld support. However, I do believe that it will try to support more hardware configurations down the line, as we know for a fact they at least try to fix some issues with Nvidia GPUs. But honestly, there is not really a rush for them, because there are already Linux distributions out there that already run very well on desktop PCs. Also not perfect, because when it comes to SteamOS features, they are of course limited as well, but they are at least installable on everything that has at least a halfway decent performance. Bassite is one of the closest experiences to how SteamOS could look like on a desktop PC. While it's not based on Arch, it does show how an immutable operating system can be utilized in a more intuitive way to install dependencies which might be required for printers or mouse configuration software to work. How did we get here? Let's go back to SteamOS. What also makes it more apparent that Valve is interested into pushing SteamOS as an operating system rather than just focus on specific devices is the new rating system that makes a clear difference between the Steam Deck and the OS itself. This has probably partially to do with hardware configurations like for example the absence of a trackpad and of course to boost accessibility if you were to use an actual Steam Deck. However, it's really nice to see a general category. 
They could have just made it individual for each device. Like for example, if you were to use a Steam Deck, then you just get the rating for the Steam Deck. If you're using a Legion OS, then for that one. But instead they decided to make it broader. And I really like that. I really hope that this new exposure of information further hurts the games that practice the idea to lock out Linux players from online or even offline experiences nowadays. They could allow dedicated lobbies if they are scared that Linux players could be cheating more. And it's not really increasing costs since you don't need to spin up more server instances for the same amount of global players. And no, it won't make the game look bad. I did get a comment that actually criticized Linux exclusive servers. Like if there were more cheaters on it, then it would make the game look bad. However, it's honestly just like any other platform used to be back in the Xbox and PlayStation era when crossplay wasn't a thing. The awesome thing about Linux is that while it's technically its very own thing, that it can run Windows games just fine, so it basically strips out the compatibility problem. And in the future, we need to come up with more solidified ways against cheaters anyway. Like I despise them myself, but not being able to play is worse than playing against a couple of cheaters. I agree that that's not ideal, but it's still better than nothing. Anyway, SteamOS being available for more than just one device is huge in my opinion. However, it's definitely not ready to be deployed on desktop PCs. The GameScope interface is great, no doubt, but as someone who is mainly a keyboard and mouse user, it's not something I would daily drive, which does unfortunately mean the loss of some features to preserve a much better desktop experience. KD Plasma is great on its own, don't get me wrong. However, in comparison to the GameScope session, there are just some features that are not available natively. But let's just see what the future holds for SteamOS. The new website, new rating system and instructions on how to install SteamOS on handhelds that don't officially support it is huge. And it definitely gets the hope up that someday we will see more supported hardware configurations as well. This does not necessarily mean that it will dethrone Windows at some point. However, it might be a suitable alternative that can properly reach a broader audience due to Steam's advertising. I for myself am certainly hoping for it. And that's where I'll leave it. So what do you think of this release of SteamOS? Do you think that they will add support for more devices in the near future or solely focus on handhelds? I'd like to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching this video and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.